All right. We are live. There we go. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> oh, man. We are back. And today we are in uh, Marmoset tool bag. Um, we're going to bake the textures out for the table that I've been working on. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I was having some uh, technical difficulty in Blender 2.8. Uh, it wouldn't export my my meshes as an FBX file. It kept giving me a an error report. <clears throat> oh, my voice is all hoarse. Um, so I had to the workaround I found. I had to export them as OBJs and open them up or import them into Blender 2.79. And that was basically how I, I worked that out. Um, they imported into Marmoset just fine here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and bake that out now. So I've already set up my baker group. Um, if you're curious how Marmoset is a little different than Substance Painter. I do have a couple, uh, I don't want to say tutorials, but I have like a tips and tricks video for Marmoset and Substance Painter. Uh, you can find that in my uh, my YouTube playlists. I think it's called um, uh, Substance Painter Blender ZBrush Tips and Tricks. But I, I go over in, in fairly good detail on how to export your objects and prepare your models for uh, Marmoset or Painter because the process is technically the same. Um, I use a workflow that ends up giving you uh, one texture map as opposed to multiple texture maps. So if you have an object that you want to have one texture map on after you're done baking, uh, that's the workflow I use. Because sometimes you don't want one texture map. You do want it to output multiple texture maps. But uh, with the stuff I'm making, that's not the case. <clears throat> All right, so here in Marmoset, let me, uh, let me get a different scene here. This one's a little too dark. There we go. For some reason, the new default material in Marmoset is uh, very shiny. Uh, so I made my Baker group, and I've got my high and low poly in there. And similar to Substance Painter, uh, when you're ready to bake, you have your two corresponding uh, meshes, your high poly and your low poly. And in Marmoset, you can uh, adjust the cage. This cage is a little big, so I can probably just pull it in a little. Let me uh, hide the other objects. Just to make sure. That should be good. And then I like to just hide the high poly or turn the visibility off so that when I'm baking it, so that when I'm baking it, I can just, uh, see the results as opposed to a blend of the high and the bake. 
this one same thing i can probably reel this in a little it's it's a pretty simple mesh not that uh complicated luckily and we'll just turn that one back on this one and just pull that cage in I do have this process uh, for most of the models I've, I've made recorded. So if you are curious on how I did some of the other ones, feel free to drop into the, the YouTube playlists and it's pretty much all there. I'm thinking of uh, in the future making a time lapse of the in between each stream. Um, that way, if you're really curious, you can see the whole, whole process, uh, but sped up. That way you won't be, um, you, you won't be too bored watching it because it can be pretty boring, especially the, like the re of parts <clears throat> and, and all that stuff. All right, now that we got that done, one thing I always like to do in, and I, uh, I say it every time, is I just do a quick test bake. And I will just uh, go ahead and do that real quick. And I do the test bake just so I can make sure that I don't need to tweak anything. Uh, because the last thing you want to do is start doing like your real bakes because they take a few minutes, you know, sometimes depending on how dense your meshes and how complicated the object is and that looks pretty pretty good i definitely am okay with that so now i'll go into the baker settings and i want to get a couple other things out of this i want a position map a thickness and I want the vertex color because that's what I'm going to use as my uh, ID map. And then once I've told it to bake those, I make sure I I activate them in the baker. Your position be an occlusion. And this one, I don't. I want it not to ignore groups. I want it to have the cavity. And you can do 64 samples now. Holy cow. I think a 2K map should be fine. But I'm just going to do a 4K because when I bring it in the Substance Painter, it's better to have a higher res map to down res from than try to go up. <clears throat> All right, so as usual, when I do this part, it's probably going to slow down a bit. So if the frame rate when I, when I start baking gets a little jaggy, I'm still here. It's just that the, uh, the computer is being taxed pretty hard while I bake. So with that said, let's bake. Go, Marmoset, go. Go, go, go. Right now I'm using a uh, NVIDIA 1070. Um, it's going on over two years old. I got it when it first came out, the Founders Edition. And I recently, I had been saving money to buy a new GPU for almost two years. So I, I, I usually upgrade my GPU every year, but um, last year, that was when the whole mining thing was going on. The, so the GPU prices were just out of control. 
Um, so I have just said, I'll wait and hold out till the, uh, the new GPUs came out and NVIDIA announced their new ones. They're definitely a little more than I wanted to pay. I think they should have just called the, the GTX 2080 Ti. They should have just called that the new Titan. Unless they're going to make a new Titan that's even more expensive. Um, but I didn't get that one. It was a little out of my price range. Uh, I did get the 2080. And uh, I was just going to get a 1080 Ti, but... I just didn't want to get a card that was technically two years old or older, the technology, because I do think that uh, as far as like the content creation and stuff goes, the software is going to find ways to take advantage of the other the touring cores, I think they're called, not just the CUDA cores, because there's a lot of cool stuff that the, uh, the new architecture does as far as content creation that the old architecture just is just not even there so <clears throat> that was the main reason i opted for that and it was basically a hundred dollars more you know? all right we're looking like we're close the thickness and the ambient occlusion always take the longest we're good there we go see how we did on our maps I'm gonna go ahead and see what the uh, vertex color looks like looking good it's got that uh, that Joker color scheme and that's so I can easily select the different parts and identify them in Substance Painter. But I am pretty happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and save this. Save this as a little table. Now let me Open up Substance Painter. I think there's an update. Or maybe I updated it. I can't remember. There is an update. Um, I will download that update just so I have something to remind me to update it but for now we'll just use the version I'm at and PBR metal rough and I'm going to be using OpenGL so I'm going to render this out in cycles and we'll just go with a 2k then I will go back to my uh, little table low FBX And I want to add the all the table files that I baked out in Marmoset into the project. There we go. I don't need that layer. And now I'm just going to load my maps in. Normals. E. Position. Wait a second. Oh, occlusion. Well, oh, that's an, the first time I've seen it load the other maps on its own. Hmm. That looks pretty good. It's promising so far. 
And I do have my little uh, small materials that I've made. Um, for some reason, my metal one doesn't load the the maps automatically and I always have to do it manually so um, space position I always have to repeat this uh, I should probably just rebuild this material, but uh, I'm I'm kind of lazy. And it'll uh, you'll see it'll it'll kind of come to life as I Put in all the maps, excuse me. Position, thickness. Curvature in occlusion. And there we go. The nice thing is, is uh, I love that about Substance Painter is once you have your smart material, the texture looks uh, identical on pretty much anything, unless it's wildly different. That's the metal. Go ahead and close that out, and then I got my my wood here. Yep, that's my wood. And then we'll go ahead and pick it with a color selection. And the, see, the wood one works every time. I don't know why the metal one doesn't. Oh, that's a little, uh, little bit of a bug there, but oh well. Never going to see the table from underneath, really. I probably didn't even need to make that go underneath. I just realized I forgot to add bolts to this. I think I can just... Um, Put them on there. Let's see. No. I don't I'll have to figure out what layer to put them on. Or I could just go back and ZBrush and, and bake that part. Or bring those in and bake them. I'll probably just do that. That'll be a little easier. And I'll probably adjust that there. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. See, my seams there are looking a little, little funky on the metal. Yeah. See it on the do triplanar.
There is a way to get rid of that. Let's see, I think if I just make a paint layer, I can just paint it out. Well, that's really not too bad. Right there, it's pretty bad. Oops. What do I do? Tributes. Nope. Oh, well, let's see what happens when I render. Do a quick test render. And yeah, I think we'll be okay. You can't even see it. Go ahead and hide the environment. Oh. Too much. Trying to get the ground right at the uh... Ugh. That is touchy, touchy slider. Okay, so try. Six. My keyboard. Okay, so it's the other way. So I want to go smaller. At 145, too much. Okay, damn it. Hey, what is going on? Apparently, it was undoing everything. I thought I was just trying to... bring the... Uh... settings back to normal. It would be like a restore defaults. There it is. Oh, that's the dome light. Oh, there it is. Okay. 
Let's try this again. It should not be this difficult. Oh, getting close. Getting close. Maybe. Try setting that to zero. And I'll set this to two. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think we're on the ground now. Let's see, what are we using as the uh, environment? I don't know if I like any of those. Let's try this one. That's pretty cool, I guess. Kind of want one with a strong shadow. How about that one? Now let's turn on some of these good old post effects. Lens distortion. And a little this. So the bloom. Maybe turn it a little so we can get some more uh, visibility of the lower part of it. lens distortion was just messing with my mind too much. I'm 
shadow so to kind of bind it what do you think turn Let's do, let's do a couple. Let's do one. Let's do like a top, top down, well, not top down, but like a three quarter, I guess. And let's override that. We'll just do this by 1080. Oops. And let's do minimum samples, 20. At the... All right, and let's save. Well, this little table. We'll do another one. Gotta render out. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with that. And save that one. And we'll call this little table. Ooh. Then we'll do one more. I can get more of the light under there. Yeah, I like that. Let that render. Five seconds. Two, one, zero. And save. Call this three. All right. Just going to save that for now. Save as. Little table. All right, and I think that's a wrap, gang. I uh, I will uh, go back and put some bolts on it real quick in ZBrush, and then probably do another bake. Luckily, it's not that bad of a process, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, yeah, uh, I think I'm going to... I was going to try to do the Inktober thing, but I just don't have the time, unfortunately. Um, but I do want to do something for Halloween, so I'm kind of like playing with some ideas. I think uh, I might start streaming some of that just to take a slight break from my diorama. Um, plus, I really just want to do something for Halloween this year. So with that said, next uh, or Saturday, I'll still do my game stream. 
Um, so if you're in the, into World of Warcraft at all, feel free to drop by for that. But on Monday, I'll start uh, trouble or brainstorming some ideas for uh, something to make for Halloween. I kind of want to do something a little more high detailed, but still stylized. Um, I haven't really figured it out yet. Like maybe a jack-o'-lantern. I know that's kind of boring, but I just want to do something along those lines. We'll see. But uh, everybody who's been following along, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, if this is your first time watching, I do stream uh, three to four days a week, sometimes five. Um, yeah, and if you uh, want to follow along uh, with the streams, go ahead and uh, like, subscribe, and uh, that way you'll get notified whenever I go live. Uh, I do have some uh, pre-recorded content that I'm working on, um, and uh, I'm just struggling. I'm having a tough time learning how to edit videos. It's a lot harder than I thought it was. Um, I know some people, it's it's a walk in the park for them, but I have not had good luck with it so far. Uh, but anyways, I'll see you guys on tomorrow. Uh, if I don't, you have a great weekend. Peace.